Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Hope and this week I'm going to talk to you guys about some cozy mysteries. So I've probably said this before in other videos, but in October and just throughout the year really, I love cozy mysteries. I love a good cozy mystery. I think they're so much fun. I think they're so easy to read. They're super lighthearted and I read them really throughout the year, but in October I always try to find like a new little cozy series that I can, you know, just read. So this week I'm going to talk to you guys about three series that I already love, and then I think four books that I tried out that are like little series starters, just to see how I feel, and luckily one of them I think is gonna be a hit. But yeah, so that's kind of what we're gonna do this week, and I guess I'll just say a little bit about like the cozy mysteries that I like. So I think usually cozy mysteries take place in a small town. I love small towns. So here for that. They take place in like a cutesy little small town. They have fun, quirky, small town characters. A lot of times our like main character does something. She owns like a bookstore or like a cafe or a tea room or a little dessert shop like owns something like cutesy like the girl does something cutesy and a lot of times our hero in these is going to be like a cop or a detective or a PI or someone like with the law I guess and there's usually some sort of murder mystery that has taken place um, in their little area and he is trying to solve it usually she's implicated in some way and it's just like her putting her nose into this investigation and you know helping and usually ending up kind of solving it herself so i like them i think they're fun cozy mysteries do not have any type of sex in them they are very clean we get like and our lips touched or something you know very clean and that's okay like sometimes you do get like those romantic kind of like thrillers or mysteries where you get the romance plus the mystery and I think those are great too but I think just for a little bit of light reading a palette cleanser if you will a cozy mystery is so cute and I have been known to just get sucked into them and like read the entire series so you know clearly they're doing something right so the three series that I already just know that I love um are I guess I'll start with the one that I read like most recently. So that is Southern Spirits. This is a series by Angie Fox. Currently we are 10 books in. The 10th book came out in like August, I think. So just in time for spooky season. And I read it like a couple, like a month or so after it came out probably. So this follows a girl named Verity and she lives in a town called Sugarland, Tennessee. And she is like from an old family in this town and her um ex his mom is like the matriarch of the town and his brother is a cop so she has this urn and she thinks there's dirt in it so she empties it out only to find out that it was actually the ashes of a dead gangster and now he is linked to her and her property and the gangster is able to kind of share his ghostly power with her and she can see ghosts and see like what dominant ghosts see which is like maybe it's like this store but in the 1920s or whatever so like I said we're 10 books in the most recent book is the haunted homecoming which I just read and this is just such a little cute series Lexi has a pet um, skunk and she starts talking to Ellis who is her ex fiance's brother and of course their relationship kind of grows throughout the series it's so much fun she has a gangster ghost his name is Frankie he's a 1920s gangster and a lot of the series is trying to find out what happened to Frankie he doesn't remember like why he died and they think that might be why he's trapped on her property or with his urn now but it's so good very lighthearted. but I will say at least one of the books uh, mint uh, it's mint julep something is one of the books and it's scary I was like a little bit scared when I was reading it actually so this particular book book 10 wasn't very scary but I think like the last two were a little bit eerie and I was like okay these are more like ghost stories like I mean clearly they're ghost stories but like it was a little bit eerie like I was like oh okay like all right Angie Fox like we're getting a little bit scary here it, and clearly that's fine but I really like this series uh I bought all of these books I bought like all of these books on iBooks because 
a long time ago, I should have checked, but a long time ago, it was free. It was like a free series starter on iBooks, and I got it when I was working in like the cloakroom at a bar one time. Uh, so I was just like sitting in there reading, and I got it, and I loved it. So definitely recommend. I know that you can buy this on Kindle, but it is not in Kindle Unlimited as of right now. And I know that you can buy it on iBooks because I bought this on iBooks because that's where I have all the other books. So definitely give Southern Spirits a try. I think it's so much fun. And the next one is actually called the Oxford Tea Rooms Mysteries. Um, they are by H.Y. Hannah. And it follows Gemma who went to Oxford and she now lives in a super small town outside of Oxford running a old English tea room called the Little Stables Tea Room. And she kind of ran off to Australia after she graduated from Oxford and she left this guy called Devlin who she loved behind. And Devlin is now a, an investigator. I think DCI is the term. Clearly they're in England, so it's a little bit different. Um, he is like an investigator and the whole thing starts because there is a dead body found outside of Gemma's tea room with one of her scones like lodged in his mouth. He like suffocated on the scone. Uh, super interesting. I think it's interesting to get like a lot of that Oxford kind of stuff because we're right by this very large town. So Gemma's mom is like super meddling. Uh, her dad just loves like cricket and her mom is super meddling. She's always like meddling in everything. She doesn't like Devlin. Devlin is a little bit hesitant, I think, to jump back in with Gemma just because like she just left him and it's cute. Gemma has a cat called Moosley. I think that's how you say it. It's named after like the little pastas. Um, Moosley is super funny. She's like a little tabby cat with green eyes. Everyone loves her. And there is a group of older ladies in town. She calls them the old biddies. And it's like four of them and they are trying to solve crimes as well. So Gemma and the old biddies often team up and end up solving all of these crimes or helping Devlin to solve the crimes. Usually they end up solving them and Devlin has to like kind of rescue them at the end, but they're so much fun. I really like it. I love the setting. I love a good like Cotswolds, I guess, is the area. I love it. I think it's so cute. I think it's so much fun. I definitely recommend those. It's an eight book series. So this series I think is finished. It The last book was published in like 2018. So I think that this series is finished, but I do think that as with most cozies, there is, even if the series is done, there's definitely room for more. Like we would just pick up where we left off. And I think that that is totally fine. Okay, and the last series that I already like know and love is the Lexi Baker series by Leanne Dobbs. Lexi um, returns to this small town to live in her grandmother's house and open a little bakery. And she has like a little dog, like a little white dog called Sprinkles. And she also meets the like neighbor behind her who is called Jack Perillo and he is a police officer. So everything is going good and dandy for Lexi until someone is found dead with a bag of her cupcake tops. So it's like they cut off the top of cupcakes and just like the ice part, which 10 out of 10, someone should definitely have a bakery that does that because I love just the tops of cupcakes. Icing is my jam. Anyway, um, they're found murdered, you know, with these cupcakes and Jack is kind of, and it's someone Lexi knows, so Jack is, you know, kind of like, eh, did you murder someone? And Lexi and her grandmother and her grandmother's friends who do all of their work on iPads uh, decide that they are going to solve the mystery, catch the killer. And then, of course, we watch Lexi and Jack's relationship, like, you know, move forward. And this one is really fun. She has like a friend um, who helps her run the cafe and her friends are seeing the other cop, Jack's partner. It's super fun. Um, I think all of these have a little bit of like those similarities there, like the having a pet and in some of it, there's like a group of older ladies that are trying to help out. So the Lexi Baker series, I think is 15 books currently, but I think I stopped around 10. I haven't completed the series. But this one and the Oxford Tea Rooms are on Kindle Unlimited and also I know on iBooks. So lots of options there. I absolutely adore all three of those and I do definitely recommend them to everyone. I think they're so much fun. They're very lighthearted reads. They're quite short. Um, I think the Southern Ghost Hunter series is a little, the books are just a little bit longer, but absolutely still love them. And I just, if you like Cozy Mysteries and you haven't read those series yet, I cannot recommend them enough. I think that they're so much fun. 
So we can go ahead and dive into the other four that I read and see what I thought. I'm just gonna quickly talk about the ones that I really li like, that I liked and will continue in the series, and then I'll talk about the other two that I wasn't such a big fan of. So the first one that I definitely liked and I'm gonna continue is called All Hands on Deck. It is part of the Hollow Haven series and it is by Mara Webb. So I think this this series actually started in like January of this year and I think there's books that have been published like every month. So we are following a girl named Sadie and Sadie is going to this island called Hollow Haven. She has just bought a cafe, but when she gets there, everyone already knows her and she's finding out that there is more than meets the eye. Like weird things happen. There's like witchy things that are happening and come to find out she um, actually has family here she has moved into her cousin's old house and basically her cousin has set it up to where she gets the cafe and it's her house and everything and she is going to be this new peacemaker so there are magical folk and humans on this island and she is going to be the peacekeeper who is like more important than the police because the magic people and the humans will listen to her and the cops are just kind of like there but the first day like the first two hours that they're there they end up finding the body of her cousin and her cousin appears in ghost form and is like bitch we gonna figure this out so with the help of charming police detective miller she starts going around trying to figure out like what happened to her cousin what happened to this other body that they've uncovered and also trying to figure out like her magic and what she you know is going to do and I think it's so much fun. We're also introduced to some werewolves and like werewolf hunters and there's all different types of magic on this island and I just think it's a super interesting series starter. I think that I will continue with the series because I just think that it's really interesting. Um, it's setting up for a love triangle between her, Miller, and this guy named Ryder and I think that that'll be like something even though I'm already rooting for her and Miller so... I hope that her and Miller kind of continue, but I'm also interested to see what exactly is going to keep happening. Like, what, like, how are they going to continue? Because, like, clearly this is a very small place and you can't just kill a ton of people off and there's not tons and tons and tons of people coming to visit. Um, apparently, like, a plane comes, like, once a week or something. So I'm interested to see how it goes. I think that I'm going to continue this one, at least read the next book. And I thought that it was really fun. Uh, I did not look to see how many books there are, but I know that this one is on Kindle Unlimited. So I would suggest giving it a try if you like a little bit of witchiness. It's fun. Um, she did spend about 30% of the book like not believing that she's a witch. And I always feel like that part, if there's someone who finds out that they're like magical or a witch or whatever, like I feel like that part kind of drags on and I'm like, okay, like let's just accept it, move on. But still super good, loved it. The next one that I read is part of the Stonehaven Mysteries and it is by Lynn Webb. This one is called Entrapped. So I read the first book last year and then this one has come out so I grabbed it. It follows a girl named Laurel. She is like a photographer, photojournalist and the guy is called Mark and he lives at this like estate I guess in Maine called Stonehaven. And in the first book, we kind of see them working together and we find out that he's like a little bit magic. And there was like this gargoyle cat type thing and he was able to like reanimate it and turn it back into like a real thing, which um, that kind of says that like gargoyles all over the world or whatever on Notre Dame and all that stuff were actually creatures that were turned to stone and can be like turned back. So um, in this one, there is this music fest like festival of music. It's not like a wild music festival. It's like a fancy music festival um, that is going to be happening at a neighboring estate and she is taking the photos for it and he is like fixing up all the stonework because that's what he does. He's like a, I don't want to say a stone mason because he's like restoring stoneworks, like restoring old statues, stuff like that. So of course on their first day working together they come across a dead body and like they decide that this must be some sort of foul play so this is them trying to figure it out i will go ahead and say just quickly like three cats i think do die in this book i'm not a huge fan of like animal deaths in books i really just hate it actually but this is not like it, it doesn't get like super in depth about it like they'll be like oh crap there's a dead cat basically which I could have left that part out like I didn't feel like it was the most necessary of things but I understood how it sort of played into the story um, 
Also, the gargoyle cat, who they call the cat, uh, has been like accompanying them to do different things and he kind of saves the day at the end which I really enjoy. I love the gargoyle cat in the series. I think he's so much fun and I like this. I think that these chapters are very short first off so definitely be prepared for that and like I said this is only the second book so we'll have more. I think the next one is coming this fall as well so I'll probably read that when it comes out but the chapters are very short the books are pretty short as well I think less than like 150 pages but I think that they're good it's interesting like that the male character in the story does have some like magical abilities whereas the girl is just kind of there I also will say he can hypnotize people and he does like threaten to hypnotize her to kiss him if she doesn't just kiss him which kind of feels like coercive to me um she wanted to kiss him anyway, but she was trying, like, not to, and he, like, used this threat. Um, so kind of keep that in mind, I guess. It felt a little bit coercive, but it wasn't, like, he didn't try to push it further or anything like that. It was just a kiss, but it did feel a little bit coercive. So I think that the Stonehaven Mysteries are cute. I think that I'll continue reading those as well, and I'm interested to see just kind of where they go. All right, the next book that I read is from the Country Cottage Mysteries by Addison Moore and Bellamy Bloom. And this one is called Kittison's Arrest, like Citizen's Arrest, but with Kitty at the front. So this is following Busy, short for Elizabeth. And she is the manager of this little like cafe inn thing, like on the coast. And she is like, they're having this bonfire thing and they find a dead body. So one interesting thing about Busy is that she can kind of read minds. And I say kind of because it's not like she can just like really zone in on whatever she can only read like what you're directly thinking right now and also it doesn't always work um, she can also read animals minds which I think is great I think it could have been utilized a little bit more than it was but I think that reading the animals minds was fun reading the people's minds she just kind of used it to like answer their questions before they asked them which I thought was kind of shady I also thought that like busy just wasn't very nice so Jasper is the policeman who comes and he is um kind of interview it or trying to figure out what happened to this girl he has a dog called Sherlock Bones and Busy has a cat I do not remember the cat's name right now but they are kind of catalysts for throwing the couple together a lot but I just thought that Busy was just kind of rude a lot of the time like she was just nasty for really no reason to Jasper and he would think something and she would like answer it but try to be slick which I just thought was kind of a gross invasion of people's privacy because it seems like a lot of times if you have characters that can read minds it's something that they don't like and that they're trying to just not have and she just uses it like willy-nilly also she was like intentionally withholding evidence from the police thinking just not even thinking like well like let me just no she was trying to be petty and withholding evidence from the police so I did not enjoy this book. I didn't like the main character. I didn't think, I okay, here's the thing. I understand trying to make her like different than cozy heroines by like her being kind of a renegade and like withholding this evidence and like being so sure that she could do this, blah, blah, blah. But really she just turned out to be a bitch and I didn't like it. Uh, like I don't read a cozy mystery for just like a full on bitchy character. I read them for like lighthearted fun. So, I didn't enjoy this. I ended up giving it two stars and it's not a series that I'm going to continue with. And the last book that I have, I actually have in person, live and in stereo. Here we are. This is called Murder by the Book and it is a Beyond the Pages bookstore mystery by Lauren Elliott. So we are following um, Addie who has just moved into town and she inherited her aunt's house. So she decided she was going to open a bookstore because her aunt has like a lot of books. She used to work in the Boston Public Library and her dad was like one of those people that tracks art thieves and so was her fiance who's also dead. So basically as soon as she moves in, people start breaking into the shop and to the house and they're trying to, like the only thing that goes missing is this like 1961 copy of Alice in Wonderland. But she makes friends with this girl who has a shop next door. Her name's like Sadie or Serena or something like that. Um, only to find out that her brother is a police officer called Mark and Mark is kind of investigating. So within like the first three chapters, her store gets broken into, she almost gets ran over and her house gets broken into. So it's just like a lot that's happening just really quickly. But like, I don't know, I felt like there was just so much and it just kept building and building and building and building. It was a lot. I really liked the idea of having like a cutesy little bookstore 
and all of that but then we find out that like whatever's happening her dad's a car accident that wasn't actually a car accident is tied into it her fiance's murder is tied into it she did like a six month stint at the british museum and like those people are just like oh my god we love you like come work for us and all this just like so much shit happened so quickly and also someone who has worked in that field like it does not work like that um you like it does not work like that. Someone who works in the museum field, trust me, like, it really doesn't work like that. I don't think there's really a lot of headhunting going around in that particular field just because it's uber competitive. So just some girl that's, like, working as a grunt worker in the Boston Public Library would not be being recruited to work on, like, an art retrieval team for the British Museum. So unbelievable, but that's fine. I don't know what it was about this book, but it just did not mesh with me. Like, I felt like her new friend was, like, super pushy and guilt-tripping her a lot. I felt like, I don't know exactly what I felt like. It was just, I did not love this book. Like, it was fine, but it was something, I don't know if it was the writing style, I don't know if it was the characterization. Something did not mesh with me, and I just wasn't loving it. Um, I probably will not continue with this series, and I will probably, like, donate this book or pass it on to someone else because I see no reason to keep like a random cozy that I don't care for in the house. But yeah, that is that is Murder Bread Book. Um, really good premise. I really liked the bookstore idea. I was really excited to see where it goes, but this one just wasn't for me. So that is kind of the newer cozies that I've read lately and also just some of my old favorites. And I hope that there's some sort of recommendation in here for you if you enjoy Cozy Mysteries. I know that I especially love them if I'm looking for something that's not just a hard romance, but isn't like a hard thriller either. If I'm just looking for something to read, I know that I can always pick up a Cozy Mystery and that I'm going to enjoy it. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this and I'll see you later. Bye!